Today's lesson will be evaluating algebraic expressions. Some important vocabulary to note today would be an algebraic expression, a variable, and term. Our first one, an algebraic expression, is an expression that contains numbers, so like one, two, three, four, operations, which are multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction, and one or more symbols. A variable is a symbol that represents one or more numbers. So this is your unknown. Last but not least, we have the vocab term term. This is part of an expression separated by addition and subtraction signs. So what does that mean? If I had 6x plus 3, you would have two terms. Your first term would be the 6x, and then your last term would be the 3. Notice that in between there's an addition sign. Let's look at our first example. We have the quantity y minus x squared when x equals negative 1 and y equals negative 2. When they say evaluate, that's a fancy way of saying you need to look at when x equals negative 1 and when y equals negative 2, you're going to take that value of negative 1, plug it in where you see the x, and where you see y, you're going to plug in a negative 2. So let's rewrite that. So y is negative 2 minus x is negative 1. Now, I find it helpful, especially when I have this negative here, that I put parentheses around the value that I'm putting in. If you notice, if we highlight right here, we have what we call a ninja flip. So that's going to take what we learned about the operations before, and changes the negative, negative 1, to a positive 1. So now we're going to follow operations, order of operations. This is PEMDAS. So what we just finished learning in class. So that means we have to look at our parentheses first. So negative 2 plus 1. When we look at that, the signs are different, so we need to subtract and keep the sign of the bigger number. So once our parentheses are reduced there, we want to take our negative 1 and square it. That means we have negative 1 times negative 1. So these agree, making it a positive 1 for a solution. For our second example, we have y divided by 5 minus x squared. So we're going to do the same thing again. When our x is negative 5, we're going to take our negative 5 and plug it in for the x.
make sure you don't drop that minus x in there. Next, I'm going to take our y equals negative 5 and plug that in as well. So I just went back and replaced that. So now I'm going to follow order of operations. So there looks like to be a lot going on here. So we want to make sure that we're following PEMDAS. So I look and see I have a set of parentheses. So I have negative 5 squared. That just means negative 5 times negative 5. is a positive 25. Notice that I did not drop the negative from up here. Next I just have negative 5 over 5 which is negative 1 minus 25. My signs are the same so we remember same sign sum. When we put those together though the signs are the same so we add and keep the sign. So we get negative 26 as our final answer. For our third example, we have y times x plus xy all divided by 5. Now, this multiplication sign right here with the x's may be confusing. So what you can do instead is rewrite it using parentheses. For some of us, that might be very helpful. So now that I've rewritten my problem, I'm going to, again, take my value x equals 5 and y equals 6 and plug them in respectively. So wherever I see a y, that now gets a 6. And wherever I see an x, I'm going to plug in the 5. just like so. Now, once you're at this step, remember when we did fractions before. It's kind of like a problem within a problem. So when you see this numerator here at the top, we need to simplify that first. And to do that, we need to follow PEMDAS. So we look and see, okay, there's no parentheses, there's no exponents, so the next step would be multiplication, which we have right in here. So this becomes 6 times 5 plus 5 times 6 is 30 over 5. We must simplify that numerator as much as possible before we move on. So we go again. We look, we have 5 plus 30, which is 35, like so. Now, I still want to reduce that fraction because... I know 5 goes into 35 evenly, and it makes our lives a lot easier in the long run. So 6 times, well, 5 goes into 35 7 times, so now we're left with 6 times 7. So when two numbers are next to each other like that, there's an invisible multiplication sign. 6 times 7 is 42 for our final answer. For our last example today, to put in with our notes. We have a times the quantity b minus b over 5 plus a when a equals 3 and b equals negative 5. So again, wherever you see an a, you're going to plug in the 3 value. And wherever you see the b, you're going to plug in negative 5. So I showed this in color this time, so then that way it helps show it as well. But I do recommend parentheses. I think that helps keep everything clear. Okay. Now that my negative 5 and my positive 3s are in there, let's see what we can do to reduce this. So this is 3 times negative 5 minus. Now this negative 5 over 5, that's just negative 1 plus 3. Now be careful. 
when this happens, and you might have saw it up here as well, a double negative creates a ninja. We call her a ninja flip. So this is 3 times negative 5 plus 1 plus 3 and our parenthesis. So now we're going to follow our PEMDAS again, or our order of operations, and plug in and simplify that parenthesis piece. So negative 5 plus 1 plus 3 gives us negative 4 plus 3. So 3, the signs are different, so you subtract, so you get negative 1 or negative 3. Now that you have seen the four examples for your notes, make sure all your vocabulary and worked out examples are shown. Return to your math checklist.